Hey, I'm John Jorgensen, and welcome to the very first episode of the Go With John show. I'm really excited to be doing this. I've been a business owner for uh, back since the mid-1980s, and uh, when I started out, I literally knew absolutely nothing about business, and uh, my first business that I started, I was a home painter. I didn't know a whole heck of a lot about home painting either. Um, I've met a lot of great people along the way. I've learned a lot of great lessons about business. And every day I'm out there now as a real estate professional, uh, selling homes, working with Stanley Martin Custom Homes, helping people with property management. Uh, and I meet a lot of really interesting people. And I have to help people solve a lot of really interesting problems. And I think the, the one thing that I want to kick this show off by saying is the why. Why am I doing this show? And and I think I meet so many interesting people along the way, and I learn so many lessons from them. I literally learn something new every day from somebody that I meet along the way. Uh, there's a jingle in there uh, for my team that's listening. If they want to get on that, I don't know. Um, anyway, so so I want to share the stories with the folks out there, and and a lot of the lessons I've learned about building homes, building relationships, and building uh, businesses. So. I want to leave these stories for my kids. I want my kids to get a taste of the world that I run into every day. And living and working in Northern Virginia is, uh, is the, there's no better place to meet people from all over the world. It's, it's crazy. All the different nationalities that are here, all the different types of folks that are here, all the different stories, all the different lifestyles. When you're helping people uh, build a home, you learn a lot about how they live. And it's really interesting that having done this now for since 2006, that I've, I've really got a good handle on how people want to age in place. I've really got a good handle on how people want to live if they have seven kids. I really have a good handle on how people live if they have one kid, you know. So, you know, there's a lot of similarities that folks come to you with when they when they build a home, depending on their uh, circumstances and people with pets and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, Long story short, I meet a lot of folks. I hear a lot of great stories. I want to share uh, the people with you, and I want to share the stories with you. And today, I'm going to start out by giving you a little bit of my history and what I've done and how I got here. John Jorgensen here, and if you're considering building a new home in Northern Virginia or Montgomery County, Maryland, reach out to us through our website, webuildonyourlot.com. That's webuildonyourlot.com. We have pricing and floor plans online, lots of great process information, and contact us through the website so we can get you started on the path to your very own Stanley Martin Custom Home. So let me just tell you a little bit about my history and, and how I got here and what I've done. So when I was a young man, I realized early on that school was not my forte. And it's really interesting. One of my very first business idols, Tom Mitchell, who will be on the show with us, and I'm so grateful to have known him. Literally, I met, I met Tom Mitchell uh, in the summer between... Uh, eighth grade and ninth grade. So I met him between right before uh, high school. And uh, I'm going to talk a lot about Tom here as we uh, go on. And I eventually got to be a business partner with him. But part of the show is building relationships. I met Tom Mitchell in, in the 80s, 70, 79. And I'm still friends with him today. We were business partners. And, you know, one of the cornerstones of this show is building relationships. So you're going to hear from Tom. You're going to you're going to hear about how we've been able to maintain our relationship uh, over the course of all these years. But when I was a young guy, I think Tom was kind of in the same boat. He wasn't big on school. He started working really hard early on, and I didn't. And I kind of watched uh, Tom really work hard and build an amazing business when he was 17, 18, 19 years old. 
I started painting houses and uh, I really loved uh, painting, which is why I did it. I still love painting today as much as I can whenever I get the opportunity to paint, uh, especially interior, not a big fan of the ladders, you know, <laughs> something about being 30, 40 feet up on a ladder and all of a sudden you run into a hornet's nest. It's uh, not a lot of fun and I've been there. Uh, so I know firsthand what's that like, what, what's, what's that, what that's like. Um, but, uh, really enjoy, uh, painting to this day. And I painted a lot of houses and it was a lot of fun door knocking when I was young. I didn't have any money, uh, getting the customers, uh, selling the jobs, uh, doing the work, and then seeing their satisfaction and their happiness at the end of the job, uh, when, when I was done. And really one of my most memorable moments, there was a family that needed to uh, get their house painted because they wanted to put it on the market and sell it. And their real estate agent said, boy, you got to paint this house. So we painted the whole house uh, from top to bottom. And by the time we finished painting it, they no longer wanted to sell it. And they didn't realize at the time that they were just unhappy the, with, with, with the way the house felt when they walked into it. And after we got the walls cleaned up and the drywall repaired and fresh paint on the walls, they were so happy they decided uh, not to move. So start Started out as a house painter, got a lot of stories about starting that business and bootstrapping. Uh, my second business I had was a water damage restoration company, and thankfully, I was able to work with Tom Mitchell. So, you know, the stars aligned, and I was kind of burning out on my situation where I was, and Tom wanted to change in pace, so we we teamed up, and we started a water damage restoration company, and I'm going to let Tom talk about that when he comes to sit down with us, so if you want to hear about what we did and how we did it, I'm going to let that roll in that, uh, in that, in that episode, but it was really amazing, and I give Tom a lot of the credit for the creativity on some of the marketing programs we had, uh, but it was a lot of fun uh, doing something new, innovating, coming up with a totally new concept uh, for a business, and we really rocked it for a long time. But that, I'll tell you, was a really tough business. You know, answering emergency calls on Christmas, New Year's Eve, I don't think in the seven or eight years that we had that company that there wasn't at least a Christmas or a New Year's Eve where I didn't have to go out and physically work uh, because when the call comes in, you got to go. So uh, that was that was the downside on that business. So the next thing I did after that was I started a company called Marketing Mania, uh, did it all on my own. I started that company in 1997, and I really uh, enjoyed uh, that company as well. And this was a time in my life where I wanted to get into more business-to-business -business sales and get a little further away from the consumer. And uh, the the business-to-business -business sales was a whole new uh, place for me to explore and learn. And uh, I started the marketing company exactly like I started my painting company. I didn't have a lot of money and uh, I needed to get customers. So I literally uh, put on my uh, shoes every day when I had time and I went out uh, door knocking on businesses. And back then, in the late 90s, it was pretty easy to just walk into a business and say, hey, I'm John Jorgensen. I'm with a company called Marketing Mania. What are you guys doing for uh, your, your marketing programs? And if you knocked on enough doors, you would get some customers. And if you took good care of them, they would come back and continue to work with you. And um, I've got some, some great lessons and, and stories with that company um, as well. I sold that company in 2004. And I partnered with Stanley Martin Custom Homes in 2006. And uh, that's a whole story that I'm going to tell kind of in the next segment of, of this episode. Uh, but the, the uh, gist of my life today is that since 2006, I have been selling real estate. I have been helping buyers buy real estate. I've been, you know, through the Stanley Martin program, helping people build uh, homes. I've been helping people buy lots, do feasibility studies. I've been walking, talking, eating, sleeping, dreaming Stanley Martin custom homes and real estate literally seven days a week since 2006. Um, had a couple of kids in 2008. 
And uh, because my business is all consuming and seven days a week, you know, the kids and the family are really involved in what I do almost every evening. They hear the stories, they hear the phone calls, they hear the challenges with real estate sales, and they hear the stress that folks go through when they when they go through a real estate transaction. So, so they've been there and they ask a lot of questions and uh, I have enjoyed trying to educate them. I have found that I have to answer sometimes the same question 150 times. Um, I'm not sure that's unique to just my kids. So the whole recording thing here, I'm excited about that too, uh, because they can go back and, and listen and hear some of the stories that they uh, enjoy and like to hear as well. So the, the, the Stanley Martin um, piece of, of, of my future is alive and well. And there are going to be a lot of topics that um, surround Stanley Martin and home building and real estate and buying a home and real estate and property management and things like that. Uh, but I will bring a lot of interesting perspectives to this conversation. I'm not only going to bring my perspective, I'm actually more interested in bringing other people's perspective to the conversation and bringing other sides of uh, the personalities in the Stanley Martin organization uh, to the folks that are out there that may be thinking about building a new home and bringing maybe some of the emotional side of the uh, real estate transaction to the conversation and the emotional side of being a real estate agent, meaning, you know, selling homes is not just getting in the car with folks and driving around and looking at homes. There are a lot of ups and downs in that uh, transaction. And I want to share some of the stories with you. So that's the, the, the kind of the why I'm doing the show and what is the show going to be about and who am I and where did I come from? I hope I laid a little bit of a foundation for you um, as to, as to what this is going to look like, but at the very highest level, I'm having a lot of fun. I've already interviewed. I don't even want to use the word interview. I've already sat down and had some incredible conversations with people like Lillian Jorgensen, who's my mom, one of the top agents in the Virginia area for over 20 years. Uh, I've sat down with uh, Boomer Foster, president of Long and Foster Real Estate, and he's shared some of his stories. He's got some great stories, I'll tell you. Uh, his time uh, playing uh, football uh, for the Gamecocks, he's got some stories that uh, everybody's going to enjoy. Uh, I've already uh, sat down and uh, had a conversation with Michael Schnitzer, who's the president of Stanley Martin Custom Homes. Um, we've uh, we've sat down with Mike Zell already. He's one of our lenders, and uh, he's got some great stories about how he got started and the lessons he learned. And and uh, I think folks are going to find that interesting. So there's lots of uh, conversations that are already in the can, and there's lots of conversations that are already lined up. And I can tell you, I'm really excited about continuing uh, to go down this road. I can honestly tell you, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea. I've never done this before. I'm having a lot of fun. I can also tell you that as I progress with this, like everything else I've done, I'm going to learn, I'm going to grow, I'm sure I'm going to skin my knee along the way uh, more than once. Uh, but uh, we're looking forward to uh, finding a community of folks that want to come back. We're going to have some regular repeat visitors. And we're always looking for new folks that want to sit down and share stories of, you know, how they overcame challenges or how they uh, realized their success or what kind of struggles did they have. It's, it's, it's amazing. Everybody has a story. Everybody. It doesn't matter who you can talk to the guy at 7-Eleven. In fact, I do. And uh, I have uh, become, uh, I don't want to call, call him a friend, but you know, I'm really interested in uh, one of the 7-Elevens I stop at at a regular basis. Uh, Saeed is often there. And uh, I've learned a lot about him and his culture and the food uh, that he loves. And uh, I almost uh, feel like uh, he is a friend, even though I think we probably wouldn't call each other friends. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just amazing when you stop and chat with folks what you can learn. So that's a little bit to get us started. And uh, I'm going to come back in the next segment. And I'm going to tell you the story, the very first lesson um, that I'm going to try to leave folks with in this first episode is how in the world did I end up uh, teaming up with Michael Schnitzer over at Stanley Martin Custom Homes?
Are you ready to buy a new home or sell your existing home? Contact us through GoWithJohn.com and we can get you started in the process with our network of highly qualified real estate agents, including Lillian Jorgensen, who works exclusively in the Northern Virginia market. Again, contact us through GoWithJohn.com. All right, so here is the story about uh, how I ended up uh, partnering with uh, Stanley Martin Custom Homes. So I had just sold my marketing company and uh, wanted to take a break. So I think anybody out there who's an entrepreneur, you know when you own a business, you are working seven days a week. The work never ends. There's always more work in a day, in a week, in a year than you can possibly get done. It's impossible. You can't do it all. So having been an entrepreneur, had, having a painting company, having partnered with uh, Tom Mitchell in our water damage restoration company, having bootstrapped the painting company, bootstrapped the water damage restoration company, and bootstrapped the marketing company, I was exhausted. And uh, I wanted to take a year off and just kind of catch my breath. I had, uh, I had uh, um, gotten my real estate license, but I hadn't really started practicing uh, real estate and uh, wanted to take some time off. So along comes Lillian Jorgensen, who's my mother, and she is a very successful real estate agent. And Michael Schnitzer, who's the president of Stanley Martin Custom Homes, who calls Lillian in, I think, November of 2005-ish and makes an appointment to uh, come in and meet with her in uh, February of 2006. I believe it was on President's Day. And uh, so Lillian calls me up and says, uh, hey, John, I've got this uh, meeting with um, uh, the president over at Stanley Martin Custom Homes, and you need to come in and be at that meeting. So I told Lillian, I said, my mom, I said, mom, you know, I'm not uh, going to be at the meeting. I'm taking a year off. I need a break. And I know that once I get working again and once I get my teeth into this, I'm going to be back 24 seven and I got to catch my breath. She goes, well, you really need to be at that meeting. So that was the end of that. And I thought that was the end of that. But no, not with Lillian. Uh December, Christmas time, she's talking about it again. Don't forget, we got this meeting uh, in February uh, with uh, Stanley Martin. You're going to want to be at that meeting. It's going to be an important one. I said, okay, uh, don't think I'm going to be there, but thanks for reminding me. January rolls around. Uh, Lillian calls. Don't forget, John, we got this meeting here in two weeks with uh, Stanley Martin. Um, it's important. You want to be there. You want to be at that meeting. And I said again, I said, you know, I don't think I'm going to be there, but thanks for the reminder. So a couple days before the meeting, I get another reminder. I wake up on the day of the meeting and I decide, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and go. So I put on a suit. I go into Long and Foster. We sit down in this small conference room uh, in the McLean office. And Lillian is sitting on one side of the conference table. It's a conference table for maybe five or six people. So it's oval, not, not, not huge. Lillian sitting on the left side of the table. Michael Schnitzer comes in and he's sitting on the right side of the table. And I'm sitting down at the end of the table. Um, not really with the best attitude for a uh, business meeting, but I didn't want to be there. And Lillian is talking about what a great real estate agent she is and all the homes that she has sold. And Michael's talking about what a great uh, builder he is and all the homes that he's sold. And they're both very excited about their respective uh, crafts. And, uh, you know, toward the end of the meeting, I asked, uh, you know, so what what is the goal of this meeting? And Michael said, well, I'm looking for real estate uh, professionals to uh, sell my uh, my homes. And uh, I said, great. I said, would you give us an exclusive? And Michael said, yeah, you know, I will. I will give you guys um, an exclusive. And he uh, put his card down and uh, got up, grabbed his things and left. And uh, I said to Lily and I said, well, there you go, uh, mom, I got you another client. And she says, I don't have time for him. He's your problem. And she left the room. And, uh, you know, I picked up his card and I walked out uh, into the lobby and I said, well, I guess I go, where do I go from here? She goes, well, they've got some communities 
out in uh, Loudoun County. Why don't you go out and look at their uh, homes? So I said, okay. So I get in my car. I drive out uh, to Loudoun County and I walk in uh, to one of their communities. I think it was Green Mill Preserve. If I'm not incorrect, I can't quite remember. It was a long time ago. And I walked in to the model home and I dropped uh, Michael Schnitzer's business card on the uh, desk of the uh, sales manager who was there at that community. And I said, I just had a meeting with Michael and I want to take a walk around the home and see what you guys have. So uh, I'm walking around the home, taking my time, looking at all the closets and the flooring and the tile. And I'm just kind of take it in the, the, the home. And before I finish walking the home, uh, somebody shows up from corporate and she says, Hey, I'm here from the corporate office. Michael Schnitzer asked me to come over and meet you. And uh, he's asked me to take you around and show you some of our other homes. And I said, great. So I spent the rest of the day with, uh, Jen, uh, was her name. And we looked at, uh, several, uh, homes. And then that evening, Michael Schnitzer called me and he said, Hey, what did you think? Blah, blah, blah. And he says, you want to get together tomorrow and uh, continue the conversation? And I said, sure. So we met the next day at uh, California Pizza Kitchen at Fairfax Corner and uh, sat down, had a great conversation. And I still wasn't really dialed into what exactly was going on. But the long and short of it is, is that um, Stanley Martin Custom Homes was founded in the 90s when the market overheated and got so hot and they were developing all these homes in Loudoun County, Michael went back uh, to the corporate side and was the chief operating officer of Stanley Martin uh, companies, which they're building now. I think they're going to build three, four, five thousand 5,000 homes this year. So they stopped taking orders in the custom home company. So this is, you know, 2001, I think they stopped taking orders. Well, the internet was really kind of a new thing in the 90s, and they had never developed a website. And there were a lot of things that evolved from 2001 to 2006. And when the market started to slow down, and Michael went back, to start uh, taking orders again in the custom home company, the whole entire program needed to be reinvented. And when I learned this at that meeting at California Pizza Kitchen, now all of a sudden I became extremely excited because there's nothing I enjoy more than starting something from nothing. And the most exciting aspect uh, about the Stanley Martin program for me at that time was that Michael and I could sit down and make this be whatever it is we wanted it to be and uh, got very excited. I think Michael and I probably, and I'm going to try not to exaggerate, but it's really hard sometimes, but I, I think we probably worked together seven days a week for at least six months before we took a day off, starting on that day uh, that we met at California Pizza Kitchen. So, you know, I was excited about my role. I think Michael was extremely excited. He was really excited about designing homes, building homes, um, the customer service. Michael and I have 100% alignment on our customer service philosophy, you know, and I think that is so important. Uh, we approach things completely differently, but at the end of the day, we both want every one of our home buyers and customers, and even people who experience our program and don't buy a home from us, we want them to have a great experience, right? There's no reason for anybody to go through a sales process with any company and have a bad experience. If you don't want to buy anything that I've ever sold in my life, I don't want you to go away going, oh boy, I really felt pushed or I really felt this or I really felt that. And, you know, I think when you're a young salesperson, you learn a lot of unfortunate lessons the, the hard way. And as you age and you understand and you get it, you want people to enjoy their experience with you. So that's what Michael and I are both really focused on from day one. And because of that, it has led to the success that, that uh, we have today. So um, that's how I 
got started in the Stanley Martin uh, custom home uh, program, the lesson, because I always like to ask people, okay, well, what's the lesson in your story? The lesson for me is don't ever pass up an opportunity to have a meeting with anybody because I tell, I tell Michael Schnitzer all the time, I said, oh my gosh, I go, I cannot believe, I tell him, I said, I didn't want to be at that meeting. I wasn't going to go to that meeting. I fought tooth and nail not to go to that meeting. I had a terrible attitude during the meeting. And I said, I, I just can't believe how lucky I am that I was at that meeting and everything worked out the way it did. Because there were about 10 or 15 opportunities where that whole thing could have gone a different way. You know, and Michael always says, luck is where preparation meets opportunity. And, you know, I think about that. I was really prepared for that moment in my life when it crossed my desk. I um, was in a position where I could seize on the opportunity. I was prepared, I was available, it was a great opportunity, and I've enjoyed literally every day of it. Now, it wasn't long after Michael and I teamed up, and I'm, this is another story for another day, but it wasn't long after we got started in our program and we were doing really well that the financial markets crashed. And uh, I'm gonna talk about how we got through that and some of the things we did and lessons learned on that uh, at another time. But there's my story, a little bit of why I'm doing the show, a little bit of who I am, my history, how I ended up at Stanley Martin and, and why it is I'm so excited to share Share so much of this with you. You know, one of the things you learn when you own a marketing company and you are cold calling companies and then fulfilling orders is you begin to get a really good handle on how a customer is going to uh, interact with your company based on the first meeting that you have with them. So let me say it this way. When I'm out door knocking, when I owned my marketing company, and I would walk into, you know, let's just say company A, uh, I could walk in, the receptionist would meet me, have a really great experience. Sometimes on a hot day, somebody would say, hey, do you want a glass of water, blah, blah, blah. And you end up bringing that person in as a customer, and you end up having this really terrific you know, business client relationship with the company and all the people there. It's the culture of the organization. You feel it. And when you do this year after year after year after year, you learn that when you walk into a company and you have a bad experience, more likely than not, if you are going to become in a, if you're going to get into a client business relationship with that client uh, or that customer, your, you, your relationship is probably going to be not as good as it is with the uh, experiences that you've had with the great experiences, right? So, um, I got to the point where I could tell within 10 minutes uh, what kind of a business relationship I would have with a company from the time I walked through the door. I would know if it would be great, medium, or not so great. And there were some where I walked in where I just said, boy, you know what? I don't think I want to work with these folks at all. So the reason I'm saying this is I'm really excited that in my life right now, the two companies that I spend 99.9% point nine 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 percent of my time with uh, are Stanley Martin Custom Homes and Long and Foster. Now I ended up at Long and Foster because that's where my mom Lillian uh, was hanging her shingle at the time I came into the industry. But I'll tell you right away from day one, I had a great experience with that organization. And, you know, since 2004 on forward, it's followed through to be a great relationship. I love the people. I love the company. And, uh, you know, there's folks there that are uh, part of my life and I consider them friends. You know, when you're a business owner and you're an entrepreneur, uh, your friends are who you spend your time with. And that's usually who you're, you're working with. Stanley Martin, from the very first moment I walked into that office, they were over on Sunset Hills Road in Reston at the time. And uh, I walked in and I was immediately greeted and uh, offered something to drink. And, uh, you know, all the years that I've worked with them, whenever I happen to be in the lobby, you know, the, you can feel the culture of the company 
when the folks walk in and they are uh, greeted by the receptionist. So the title director of first impressions is really uh, an appropriate title for somebody who's sitting at the front desk of a company. And I think it follows uh, through. So uh, the lesson there, you know, is that, uh, you know, pay attention to your feelings when you walk into a business, if you get a good feeling, it means something. And your experience with that company is probably going to be delivered uh, greatly. So funny thing about life, you know, when I started thinking about how I was going to share my stories with folks and 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 lessons from the road, uh, I uh, was thinking about this all the way back in the 2000s. I'm like, boy, so many interesting things happen when you own a business. Interesting things happen, both good and bad with employees, with customers, with, you know, just just regular situations that come along in life and uh, technologies evolved and things changed. Well, Back in 2013, amazingly enough, I really got serious about starting to capture some of these stories and, and be able to deliver them uh, to other folks out there that may be interested in hearing them. And uh, we, we did quite a bit of work to put this show together in 2013. And then the market just got so crazy and so busy, 2014, 15. You know, remember I had uh, twins in 2008. So now I'm, I'm a dad and I don't have quite as much time as I had in the evenings, maybe sometimes none, right? Because the kids um, um, consume time, which is great. Love it. And, um, you know, so the whole project just kind of sat on the shelf. And uh, we started really getting serious about putting the studio together last year uh, for video production and uh, podcasting. And I would say we spent the majority of 2019 really building an amazing studio that with high ceilings, well lit, green screen backdrop, professional lightings. Thank you, uh, Don Eros, uh, for all the work that you did on that. Um, and then we, we literally spent, I don't know, maybe two months in the studio. We recorded a lot of videos, got a lot of good things uh, recorded, and then COVID comes along. So, you know, I think we were recording pretty heavily in January and February. COVID hit us in March and literally we had to turn the whole thing off. And uh, we very quickly decided to uh, switch gears literally within 30 days. I think we said, let's just back burner the video for right now until we get through this COVID thing and let's go to an audio format. And it's worked out really well. And it's just one of those things that, you know, all the preparation in the world, you know, I'll, I'll talk here. Uh, you'll hear the story about uh, the uh, preparation meeting opportunity, but all the preparation in the world cannot prepare you for the unpredictable. And you know, my team knows they work with me. I always say, I don't know what's coming, but there's something coming, you know, and when it comes, we have to be ready to deal with it. And that is true at all times, right? Nobody saw the 2001, you know, market collapse coming. Uh, really, I mean, people saw it when it was starting to happen. The same thing with the financial crisis, right? Because if we saw it years in advance, we would have stopped doing as a society what we were doing that led to those things. So there's always going to be some sort of a surprise every five or 10 or 15 years. Uh, so COVID, I never imagined that there would be some sort of a pandemic where we would not be able to have people come into our studio and, and record. But that's what happened. So here we are. I hope you have a lot of fun with this. It's a it's a it's not the format we started out with, but we're not going to let the pandemic slow us down from bringing these great stories to you all. I want to dedicate the first season of the Go With John show to a, a very special person who we lost a uh, short time ago. Cindy Dellinger uh, was a fantastic real estate agent out in Shenandoah County. I met her in 2011 when I purchased uh, my farm out in uh, Woodstock, Virginia. And uh, Cindy had told uh, me at one point in our friendship that she one day wanted to become a syndicated radio host. And I had told her I had similar aspirations, but I was going to do something online, maybe a podcast. We hadn't quite nailed down exactly what we were doing. But Cindy and I had 
uh, multiple conversations about what we would do on our shows, and they were not competing at all. So was very fond of Cindy, but she also embodies what it is that I want this show to be about. She embodies the values that I want to teach my kids. And I'll just tell you one quick story. A couple of years ago, Cindy called me to bounce a few things off me regarding a real estate transaction to which she was involved. She was the listing agent on a property and she had two offers in hand. I can't remember all the details, but as I recall, she was the buyer's agent on one offer and there was now a second offer in from a different agent. Cindy had called me because she wanted to do everything by the book and she was going to counter one of the offers and she was going to try and get the second offer into backup position. She did not want the fact that she was the listing agent to cloud her judgment. She did not want the fact that she was the listing agent of the home and the buyer's agent on one of the two offers to cloud her thinking. That's why she wanted to bounce her thoughts off another agent. At the end of my call with her, I remember being impressed with how incredibly honest and fair she was striving to be, even though it probably resulted in her losing money. She did not care about herself, her ego, or her money. She only cared about doing the right thing, and the fact that no one else was looking made it even more impressive to me. I will always remember Cindy and the values that she carried throughout her daily life. Cindy Dellinger. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Go With John show. Please subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice and keep up with our latest episodes and what's going on with the show at gowithjohn.com. That's gowithjohn.com.